Hello students. Welcome to class 8 Geography lesson 1. Today we will be seeing the second part of the first lesson, Rocks and Soil. In the previous class, we studied about the formation of rocks, its types. And today we will be learning about soil. So soil is described by several characteristics including its texture, that is consistency, color, density and structure. This picture shows how the soil is formed. The mountains break apart to become boulders which break apart to become small boulders again which break apart to become big rocks which break apart into smaller rocks and which again break into gravel or worn away by water to become pebbles. Pebbles and gravel are broken up into sand and this process is called as weathering. And based on the texture and the structure of the soil, the soil is categorized as sand, silt and clay. And this sand, the size of the sand ranges from 0 0.05 to 2 millimeter. And silt, the size of the silt ranges from 0 0.00 to 0 0.5 millimeter and it feels very soft and smooth and clay and the size of the clay is very 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 tiny it size ranges from less than 0 0.002 millimeter and it feels sticky soil and its formation soil is a mixture of organic matter minerals gases liquids and organisms that together support life. Soil minerals form the basis of soil. It forms on the surface of the earth. That's why soil is known as the skin of the earth. Soils are produced from rocks, that is the parent material, through the process of weathering and natural erosion. Water, wind, temperature, the change in temperature, gravity, chemical interaction, Living organisms and pressure differences all help break down parent material. It leads to the formation of loose material. In course of time, they further break down into fine particles. This process releases the minerals locked in the rock fragments. Later on, the vegetative cover, which helps in that region, forms humus content in the soil. This way, the soil gets matured gradually. What is humus? Humus, the dark colored organic matter found in soil is called as humus and it is made of decayed plants and animals and the major components of soil. Soils have four major components, mineral matter, organic matter, air and water. Mineral matter contains three fractions, sand, silt and clay. Organic matter contains appreciable quantities of nitrogen, phosphorus and sulfur. Air and water occupy the four spaces in soil. See here, the mineral particles occupy the major portion of the soil around 45%. Air 25% and water 25% and the rest of 5% is occupied by organisms, roots and humus. And this is the soil profile. What is soil profile? The soil profile is defined as the vertical section of the soil from the ground surface and it extends from the ground surface that extends downward. Actually, this is the picture that shows the layers of the soil. So here you have, this is the parent rock or we can call it as the bed rock and it is given the name or that is or horizon. This is nothing but this layer consists of unweathered part of bedrock. Actually, this is the parent material of the soil. And above the or horizon, we have sea horizon or the parent rock. And partially, this is the partially weathered parent material that accumulates in this layer. And next to this, we have B horizon that is also called as subsoil. And this layer reflects the chemical or physical alteration of the parent material. Thus, iron, clay, aluminium and organic compounds are found accumulated in this horizon. And above the B horizon, we have E horizon, that is the elevated layer. And E stands for elevated layer here. 
This layer is significantly leached of gray, iron, and aluminum oxide, which leaves a concentrated concentration of ore. And above the E horizon, we have A horizon, which is also called as topsoil. And this A horizon, A topsoil, is composed of organic matter mixed with mineral matter. And above all, on the ground, we have O horizon or humus. This layer is dominated by organic materials like leaves, needles, twigs, moss, and lichens. So this is the picture that shows the soil profile. How does soil form? It takes a long time for soil to form. Soil forms as rock is broken down by weathering and mixes with other materials on the surface. Soil is constantly being formed every time bedrock is exposed. Over time, soil develops layers. We call these layers as horizons, which we saw in the previous slide. It has different horizons. See, this is the bedrock. This is the weathered bedrock. This is the subsoil, topsoil, and humus. And do you know every year, 5th December is celebrated as World Soil Day to create awareness among the people, to understand the importance of soil and how to conserve soil. And do you know it takes hundreds of years to make just one centimeter of soil. Though soil is a renewable resource, it takes more than hundreds of years to form a single thin layer of soil. Six different types of soils are found in India. Alluvial soil, black soil, red soil, nitrate soil, mountain soil, and desert soil. Now let us see these soils one by one. Alluvial soil. These soils are found in the regions of river valleys, flat plains, and coastal regions. These are formed by the deposition of silt brought down by the running water. It is the most productive of all soils. It is suitable for the cultivation of sugarcane, jute, rice, wheat, and other food crops. And in India, this alluvial soil is found in the northern great Gangetic plains of India and also in the delta cotton parts of the east coast of India. Black soil. And this black soil is clayey and retentive in nature. What is the meaning of retentive? It can hold the water for a very long time. It retains the water content for a long time. So this clay soil is clayey and also it is retentive. They swell. Swell means they expand and become sticky when wet and they shrink when dried. During dry season, these soils develop wide cracks. They are rich in lime and iron, nitrogen and organic matter. Red soils. These red soils are formed by weathering of metamorphic rocks and crystalline rocks. The presence of iron oxide makes the soil red to brown in color. It is usually found in semi-arid regions, but it is not a fertile soil. It is suitable for millet cultivation, but this soil accepts the manures, fertilizers, and thus by applying these things, this soil is widely used for cultivation nowadays. The next is labrite soil. These are the types, typical soils of tropical regions. These soils are found in the regions which experience alternate wet and dry conditions like Kerala. As these soils are formed by the process of leaching, that is, the new water soluble nutrients are washed away, that is called as leaching. As these soils are formed by the process of leaching, it is in part I, it is suitable for plantation crops of tea and coffee, and also cashew nuts are well grown in this soil. Mountain soil. It is found in the hill slopes. Soil in these regions are thin and acidic. They are formed by deposition of organic, rich in humus, poor, poor in potassium lime. And they are found in the areas like Assam, Kashmir, Sikkim, and Arunachal Pradesh. The crops are tea, coffee, spices, and tropical fruits are grown. However, this mountain soil it differs from region to region based on the altitude of the mountain because the same type of trees do not grow throughout the mountains at different altitudes. They, in the foothills, you can see uh, deciduous trees or evergreen trees. And when the altitude increases, the trees also differ according to the height. So the soil also differs. Desert soils. These are sandy soil found in the hot desert regions. 
these soils are porous and saline water. What is the meaning of porous? That is, they absorb water. Uh, they look just like this iodized salt. Have you washed the iodized salt when you pour this iodized salt in a bottle? You can see it uh, falling loose, uh, loose, isn't it? Like that, these soils are porous and saline. Since it is infertile, agriculture in these soils are not so successful. And soil erosion, what is soil erosion? Just the removal of the top soil is called as soil erosion. It affects the fertility of the soil. Soil erosion is the removal or destruction of the top layer of soil by natural forces and human activities. Soil erosion reduces the fertility of soil, which in turn reduces the agricultural productivity, running water and wind are the major agents of soil erosion. Not only running water and wind, sometimes our human activities are also turned as a major erosion of this soil, major agent of this soil erosion. And the diff there are different types of soil erosion. The major ones are sheep erosion, rill erosion and gully erosion. These are the three different types of soil erosion. This picture shows the three types of soil erosion, sheep, rill and gully erosion. What is soil conservation? Soil conservation is the process of protecting the soil from erosion to maintain its fertility. The methods that are widely practiced for conserving soil are afforestation, that is growing of more trees, planting more plants, controlled grazing. Sometimes when the animals graze, they graze the grasses till the roots and definitely it will affect the soil fertility. So we have to control the grazing. Construction of dams, crop rotation, strip farming, contour ploughing, terrace farming, checking shift cultivation, inbreak, etc. And these are all the different types of soil conservation. Strip farming, that is cutting down the terrace farming, that is cutting the land on the slopes of the hills into steps to retain the water. And no till planting means Once the ploughing or uh, first tilling is carried out, the dead plants are not removed from the ground. And here these are called as wind breaks. The trees are grown between the fields and the trees slow down the wind and reduce the wind erosion. And contour cropping is nothing but the crops are planted in curving rows to follow the contour of this. This slows the runoff and reduces the soil erosion. And cover crops. Fields are planted year-round even in seasons when crops do not grow. The plants cover the soil and hold it in place. Why is soil important? Nutrients in soil help plants to grow and anchor roots in the ground. Atmosphere. The soil releases gases such as carbon dioxide into the air. Living organisms, many animals, fungi and bacteria live in soil. Soil is important in recycling nutrients. Soil helps to filter and clean water. Rocks and soils are important renewable natural resources. Both of them play an important role in everyday life of human beings as well as economic development. Nowadays, rock-based companies are in increase which provide employment to a sizable population. Soil affect human settlement and other economic activities. It's naturally, people settle down where the soil is fertile. As India is an agricultural country, the proper management of soil resource will lead to a sustainable food protection besides its use for various other purposes. So, soil resources must be conserved. Hope you understood this lesson.